We're going to start something new today. I've been trying to get to it for a while. Um, <clears throat> most of you know that Pastor Rod and I go away when we can. We try to at least go away a couple times during the year and spend a few days um, we're not fasting and praying. Usually where we go, we eat shrimp and pray. But we do spend the whole day praying, except for um, you know our meals, uh, usually one meal out. But we spend a lot of time praying. And, and in case you're new, um, I do a lot of praying in other tongues. And then the Lord usually uh, by speaking out what I'm getting or by knowing. And then Pastor Rhonda, uh, she's my... Um, stenographer a lot of times and we pray together and it's not something I get once but it's like a repetitive when I hear from the Lord it's over and over and over again and so a lot of uh, the things you see uh, the building you're sitting in a lot of things you see on campus a lot of things we do that's how I we get them Pastor Ron and I pray until we know and then when we know we do how do you become a success, a success in life? <clears throat> you pray until you know. Of course, you know the word and you do the word. But in your personal life, you pray till you know. And then you do what you know. And then God will work. <clears throat> and so a lot of times the series that I do, a lot of times it'll be things that I've prayed out. And so I kept praying out <clears throat> um, sanctified and holy by grace. Sanct, have, have you heard that word much in the modern church? Sanctified. Holiness. Don't anybody get scared and ladies don't gra go grab your bobby pins and put your makeup away. <clears throat> I'm not talking about that. <clears throat> you know, I grew up in uh, uh, a lot of Pentecostal area in my, when I grew up. And all the ladies, they had, they had hair high, uh, a mile high, all those bobby pins. That must have hurt. <clears throat> and they couldn't wear any makeup, and they had dresses on, and the guys could look however they wanted to look and do whatever they wanted to do. And, uh, uh, and I used to see the ladies sad, but I thought about it. I'm like, if you had to have those things stuck up in your head all the time, and <clears throat> you could never paint the barn or anything like that, you couldn't do whatever you wanted to do or... You might be a little irritated too, but it's, I'm not talking about that. And so don't anybody get scared. And we're really not going to talk about that yet because I've been trying to get to this for a while. And, you know, um, we, uh, so let me, let me, let me read some things that I, I read out, uh, uh, prayed out, sanctified, holy by grace. Without grace, it becomes religious. An understanding of grace is essential for the hour. An understanding of grace is essential for an hour. Then he said this to me, tell them who I am, tell them what I've done, sanctification, holiness by grace. And so um, I'm going to begin to talk to you more about grace. And so as we looked at the prophetic utterance, we've already talked a lot about standing grace. And when I teach on grace, really uh, standing grace is the one that I teach on the most. And how do you get standing grace? We, we talked about it. Remember what the Lord told Paul when he was in trouble. Remember, uh, the Paul finally got tired of the devil beating him up morning, noon, and night. And he, and he called out to the Lord, you know, hey, this demon is bothering me. What are you going to do about it? And what did the Lord answer? He said, my grace. Grace is sufficient. Everybody say, God's grace, God's grace. is more than enough. <clears throat> he didn't tell him to get over it. He didn't tell him to hold on. He said to stand in grace. And so we're going to talk about the different aspects of grace. For me, standing grace, because I teach so much on the authority of the believer, is the one I talk about. But there's saving grace. There's serving grace. There's standing grace. Amen. There's a grace to be rich. Uh, grace is throughout the word of God. And a number of um, years ago began, especially in the United States and around the world, in South America, especially where we minister, um, <clears throat> revelation began to come a lot about grace. But a lot of people then decided, well, are we a grace church or are we a faith church? Are we a grace church or are we a faith church? Because then they, you get in when you teach on grace a lot. Grace um, is all God's side. 
And really, as it goes and develops, it becomes back to the sovereignty of God, and it's all up to God, and it's all by grace, and we live in the New Testament, and there's nothing you can do, just, just the God is, all this has been offered to you, he's grace. And then, you know, about faith, we talk about how to receive from God. So people want to know, because uh, I've had people ask you, at Cornerstone Word of Life, she's like, uh, you're a faith church, not a grace church. Well, I beg to differ with you, we're a grace and faith church. <clears throat> Really, you can't have one without the other if it's done properly. If your if your faith in a religious way, you get uh, if your faith and, and there's no grace in it, you get very religious. If, if you're if you're grace only and there's no faith and it's all up to God, then you get greasy. <clears throat> and so uh, we are both. And so we're going to begin to talk about that. Y'all y'all here? So we're going to talk about grace and faith. So I. <clears throat> I, was, I read something one time to define grace and mercy. Um, I'm going to give you this, this scripture. This is the one that I woke up with and I'm grateful for. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, it says, Let us come boldly to the throne of grace. So when you talk about grace, there's the throne of grace. How I many you know we can all go into the throne room? It's a, it's a real place. I said the throne room is a real place. Where you can see, and where, what do you go there for? Yes, to fellowship with God, but you go there on purpose. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace. Everybody say, let's go to the throne of grace. And there what's going to happen? That we may obtain and do what? And find grace and find grace to help in the time of need. Well, I don't know of any other time. There's some needs. There's some needs. And so um, what is the difference, though? Because it's two things. Come to the throne of grace where you can find mercy. What's, what's mercy? Where you can come and get grace. So everybody says, well, grace is God's unmerited favor. Uh, it is God. Grace is always God's part in everything. Grace is God offering. But I like this. You know, it, it, let's just say a, a, a thief, a robber came to your house. And, uh, and it was taking your stuff and you came home and you caught him. And so if, if these two things were in operation, number one, if you just had mercy on the thief, what would you do? You would forgive them and not report them, right? If I was going to have mercy on them, I would say, man, you know, if you're stealing from me, bless your heart. And, and I, I would just, I would say, you need to get up on out of here before I call 911, be gone. You, you forgive them and you don't turn them in. But grace would do something different. Grace would do something different. Grace would say, um, you ought not done this, <laughs> but here's some money. Here's some food. Here's some clothes. I'm going to give you, you didn't, I'm going to give you, the, that's grace. What do you need? Well, we need both. We need mercy and grace. God is the God of all grace. God is, he is that good. He is that good. While you were all together a sinner, when you were a, a robber, when you were a thief, when you were, uh, you know, you were outside of the covenant, God, ga God gave you grace. God extended his hand to you that is open. He gave you Jesus, and if he gave you Jesus, what would he ever withhold from you? So I want to talk to you about grace, and we're going to start, though. We're going to begin to talk about that it's by grace through faith. And so don't let this be too simple, because we're going to build on this, and then we're going to build and build and build, and then we're going to go into sanctification, and then we're going to go into holiness. This is what the Lord told me. I didn't write this one down, but I remember it well. He said, there is a door that I want to take you and this body through, but you can only go sanctified and holy. Can only, there's a door in the realm of the spirit. There's some things that God wants to do in our lives. There's a door that he has for us in the realm of the spirit. How I many you know in, the, in the, the realm of the spirit, there's doors, there's windows, there's gates, there's portals. And, and, and everybody, everyone, just because they're born again, doesn't get the same thing. Yes, if they're born again, they, we all get to go to heaven. But we're here on the earth and different things happen for different people in the level of their obedience and the level of their revelation. 
And the Lord, I believe by the Holy Ghost is saying to us, there is a door that I need you as a body, you as a, me as a person, you as a body to go through. And this door, you're going to have to be sanctified and under, understand it and have revelation of it. You're going to have to walk in the holiness that I've given you. And yet the only way you're going to do it is by grace. Both of those things, sanctification and holiness can be done religiously out of works and it brings bondage. But done by grace, done by the Spirit of God, it's joyful, it's freedom, it's glorious, and it's going to open some opportunities, I believe, for you and for me that maybe others are not going to be able to partake of. So that word grace is from the word cheris. And um, uh, some, it's like this. When, grace means that when you've done something wrong, somebody else stepped in to take care of it. When you were an all together, when you were a sinner, when you and I were away from God, Jesus stepped in and he took our penalty. He took our sin. He who knew no sin became sin. And that is grace in operation. And Titus chapter two, verse 11, it says, for the grace of God, it is for the grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared to all men. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. And so this grace is something something that God is offering to us. But how do we get it? How do we get everything that God has offered to us? How, uh, it, um, salvation, let's look at this, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5. You're all familiar with it. It says, even when we were dead in sins, he has quickened us together with Christ. We all know this. Everybody say it. By grace, you are saved. It's by, how, how are you saved? By grace. But then it doesn't stop there. Because people say, well, everything of salvation is just by grace. It's just by grace. In other words, God wants everybody to have it. But is everybody on planet Earth saved? No. Is everybody on planet Earth going to heaven? Is everybody, I'll ask you this one because we had a conversation about it recently. Is everybody on planet Earth a child of God? Some of you are not so sure. I heard yes and no. There's two families on the earth. You either one or the other. Jesus told the religious people, you're of your father, the devil. Um, everybody potentially can be a child of God, but they're currently not children of God. Th that, you have to watch that. You have to watch that. Well, you're a child of God. We'll prove it. How? I'm born again. I'm in the family of God. Everybody on planet Earth can be a child of God. But everybody's not a child of God. Well, everybody's a child of God. Well, um, but you see, if people believe that, then they won't, by grace, receive everything that God has for them. Amen? You say, well, that's kind of ticky-tacky. Yeah, a little bit. But if we start thinking everybody's okay, then we're going to leave them alone. They're not okay. They're not okay. Well, everybody gets to decide. They do. But you and I can help them decide by showing them the goodness of God. Are, are, you, are you here? But let's not stop. It says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5, it, it says it again. Let's say it again. It says, it's, uh, by, by grace, everybody say, by grace, I am saved. So what is that? God offered it. Did God offer it? Every, well, so what is salvation? Well, um, do, you, do you got up and up there, whoever's up there, do you got uh, Reverend Opal's healing school stuff on salvation? What is salvation? What, what, what's, what's included? Because see, when, we, when people talk about salvation, most people just think, well, going to heaven salvation, right? But salvation is so much more. And so let's just talk about this. So what does salvation mean? Well, it, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the Greek word soteria. It means rescue or safety. It means to be delivered. It means health. It means save, saving. Amen. So uh, uh, doing well, right? Uh, uh, all that salvation is. So salvation includes, yes, you going to heaven, but it also includes your healing. It also includes your being blessed, right? It means to deliver, protect, heal. Salvation includes your protection. Amen. Are, are you protected? Are you protected? Do you need protected right now? You need protected, hallelujah, to heal, preserve, save self, do well. Come on, do you want to do well? Do you want to be a success? That's, that's part of sozo salvation, be made whole. 
And so God is offering, by, by grace, are you uh, saved, delivered, protected, healed, preserved, uh, doing well, being made whole. That's all that salvation is. It's not just going to heaven. What is it? It's grace. It's grace. By grace, by God's, uh, con- you, you didn't deserve anything. You weren't, you didn't work to put yourself in a position for God's kindness to come to you. He just decided he was going to be kind to you. He just decided he was going to be good to you. He just decided he was going to heal. Come on, when Jesus went to the cross, really, he could, they could have decided, Father could have said, well, let's just save them so that they can, when they die, they can come to heaven. Let's just do that. But that's not what he decided. What he decided was, yes, I'm going to save them from their sin, but I'm also going to heal them in their physical body so they can enjoy their time on the earth. I'm going to bless them. Heaven is full of blessing in my father's house. There are many mansions, right? The streets are made of gold. But, but God wants to bless you when you're here on the earth. He wants you to do well while you're here on the earth. He, that's part of your salvation. How did you get it? By grace. But I got it by confession. No, you didn't. You got it by grace. I got it because I believe God. Because it was offered by, you can't get anything by faith that has not been offered by God through grace. It is not of works. It's not of work. See, when confession becomes a work to you, it's religious and you think you did something. Pastor, you believe in confession. I believe in it a lot. But I'm not working to get something. There's not one at the 1,000th time I put in my due and then now God owes me. That's wrong. It's by grace. It's by grace. He's offering all that salvation is by grace. He offered you healing by grace. I don't care what a doctor said. I don't care what, what, what they label you. I don't care what part of a spectrum you're on. I, I, I don't care what disease they tell you got. Jesus, by taking stripes on his back, by grace is offering you healing. I don't care if you got a degree or you don't got a degree. I don't care what you look like, what color your temple is. Whether you got shingles on the roof or you don't got shingles anymore. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter your degree. God can take you from the gutter. He can take you from a dunghill and he can lift you up and sit you with the princes of his people. That is done by grace. That is God offering something to you. It's not because of who you are. It's not because you're so cute. It's not because you're pretty. It's not because you're all that. It's not because of anything you've done. It's not ever really been about you. It's about him. It's about who he is. It's about his goodness. It's about his kindness. It's about his open hand. Grace offers all that he is. Hallelujah. So in Ephesians 2, 5, it says, even you were dead in sins. He's quickened us together with Christ by Christ. By, by grace, you saved. <clears throat> he raised you up together. Verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith. Do you got it? How are you saved? How do you receive all that salvation is? By grace. By grace. I, no, I said it, so some of you are right. How do you receive it? Through faith. How do you receive it? Through faith. It's offered by grace. So if all you hear is grace, 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 then you become um, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Because, see, grace needs to be taught. Grace needs to be understood. But that's just God's part. There's always a God side and a man side to everything. So if all you hear is God offers, God offers, God offers, God gives, God gives, God gives. This is what you can have. This is what you can have. This is what you can have. But if he didn't tell you how to get it, that'd be kind of mean. So what does he say? By grace you say through faith. Through faith. Grace offers 
faith receives. But faith can't receive something that's not offered. And you can't know what to receive until you know what's been offered. But if all you ever know is what is offered, you'll, your heart will get sick and, and you didn't grab a hold because faith is the only way to get what's been offered. I said, faith's the only way to get what's been offered. And yes, maybe around here even, you know, sometimes we assume too much. Sometimes I assume, well, they understand that. So what I've seen is most people don't have a problem figuring out what God's offered. Most people have a problem figuring out how to receive. And so we spend a lot of time on how to receive. I'm doing it again on Wednesday night, taking my time, going through it. It's been some of the best teaching I've ever done on faith by revelation. I mean, God is really helping me and helping you. And it's been, if you, if you haven't listened to any of it, you need to go back, uh, go on the website, cwol.org, uh, listen to those messages, go on our YouTube channel, get them, because I believe it's great revelation. And sometimes, though, I think, well, they understand uh, that God is offering and they got to take it. But I don't, I, I'm, I'm just can't, we're, I'm just not going to assume any, I'm not going to assume anymore in this season. You need to understand that it's being offered to you. Grace offers it to you. And that the way you're going to get it is you're going to get it by, uh, by faith. Um, Romans 5, 2. Romans 5, 2. We talked last time, uh, we've been talking as we went through the, prof the prophecy about 2022. We looked at standing grace. And once again, I want to see this. And I'm just going to get started today. Uh, Romans chapter 5. It says, by whom also we have access. By whom we have access. How? So by faith into this. Now this is talking about standing grace in particular, but it all works the same way. In order to get access, in order to receive, when you're at the throne room of grace, where you get mercy, are you grateful for mercy? Have you ever needed mercy? Is not mercy's new every morning? I took some this morning. How many, are you taking some mercy this morning? Are you grateful for God's mercy? Me too. But we can find grace in the time of need. And we can learn to stand in that grace to resist the devil. But all of God's grace is accessed by faith. Grace to serve. Grace to be rich. Saving grace. How do you, listen, if you were dealing with somebody who wasn't born again, and they would say stuff like this. Well, I'm just waiting on God to save me. I see is good, but I, I, I'm just going to wait on God. I, I see it's offered to me. And, uh, I, you know, I believe that, you know, that I, I get it. There's a heaven. And I'm just waiting on God. I'm just waiting. I know that his grace is going to overtake me and overwhelm me. And I'm just waiting on God. I, I, see, that, I see that Jesus, you know, uh, he did all that. But I'm just waiting on God to be saved. I'm just, are you saved? No, I'm just waiting on God. I'm just waiting on God. I see this grace. It looks good. That, I see that grace is there. I see what you and I would get frustrated with them because we'd be like, come on, let's pray and let's get it. Let's receive it because salvation is received. Yes, you're potentially a child of God, but you can't be until you receive. How do you receive? By faith. What do you do? You believe something that's said about Jesus, that he was raised from the dead, Right? You confess your sin. Only one sin, that's the only one God cares about when people that are not born again. He don't care about all their sins. He don't care about their adultery. Pastor Mark, be careful. I am being careful. He doesn't care about their adultery. He doesn't care about this sin. He doesn't care about that sin. If they're not born again, he cares about one sin. They rejected Jesus. Now, after they get born again, oh, he cares about them all. Amen? That's when he cares about them all. Because you can't walk in any of them and, and walk in the blessings of God. Because sin always produces death. But when someone's not born again, this grace is available. What do they got to do? Now, now, stick with me. I'm trying to build a foundation so I can get to the other stuff that I want to get to. But you need to understand this. And we're going to go over some things about grace. And we're going to take our time. Because it, it, if, if, if we need to walk in sanctification and holiness by grace, that means a lot of people are trying to do it by religious 
And they're trying to be sanctified, set apart, and be holy by some religious means instead of by grace means, which then it gets all messed up. And anytime you do it religiously, then you think you've done it and you deserve something from it. But anytime you understand grace, you realize that he did it. It's about him. And I can walk in what he's done. And it's not about me. I receive it, though, by faith. I have access to grace wherein I stand. How? Now, by faith, by faith, everybody say access. So all, what, what is grace? It is God giving to you. It is God's part. How do I access it? Through faith, by faith. Um, he said, my grace is sufficient. So everything that he has is sufficient for you. Um, Romans 12, 6. I was listening. Uh, we got the chance to go down to uh, Brother Keith. Uh, to their um, living faith crusade or whatever they call it. Uh, what was it called? Greater faith. Greater faith. Somebody's got faith. Hallelujah. Romans 12, and he brought this up, and so I wanted to bring it up. Romans 12, 6. It says, having then gifts differing. So if you look at this, uh, let's just start at verse 3. Romans 12, 3. For I say through the grace given unto me. So this is talking about serving grace. How many of you know every one of you that are born again have grace to serve? That was really weak. <laughs> every one of you in this room, every one of you watching, everybody has grace to serve. Well, I believe my, my part is to sit and soak. You believe wrong. Everybody has a grace to do something for God. Everybody. Well, I'm not called to the ministry. Yes, you are. You're called to the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. Everybody a minister. Everyone a minister in the new covenant. Everyone. You want a title? I dub you minister of reconciliation. Get a card. Do you, need, do you need me to make one up for you? I'll make you up a card. You can carry it in your wallet. Hallelujah. You are a minister of reconciliation. You're a minister. Congratulations. I ordain you ministers of reconciliation. I, I ordain you children's helpers. I ordain you ushers. I ordain you parking lot people. I ordain you uh, praise and worship team. I ordain you to do the work of the ministry. Everyone has grace to serve. Just like you have two lungs, both of them serve your body. You have two kidneys, both of them serve your body. You have two legs. Are you grateful? You can make it on one, but God gave you two. Amen. You can make it on one lung. I know I'm taking, I really told you it was going to take my time. So I'm really taking my time I'm doing a little meddling right here. I'm just telling you right now, uh, there's a lot of people just, you know, if, if you had two lungs, aren't you glad they both function? You know, if one out of every two people only serve in the body of Christ, which is high, it's usually 10%. In most churches, it's not our church. We don't, we don't do that because we're all family and we help one another. But in most churches, it's less. That. But even if you just had one lung, well, pick the right one. Which one you want, left or right? You got two kidneys, pick one. You got two legs, pick one. You got two hands, pick one. See, if, that's, if we did that with our body, we'd be a mess and couldn't do anything. Everybody say, I have serving grace. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. That was worth coming. That was worth combing your hair. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You have grace to serve. Amen. I'm too busy to serve. Anyway, so um, glory to God. Aren't you glad Jesus didn't say I'm too busy to go to the cross? Anyway, moving on. Um, so moving on. I got issues right now. I'm trying to work some things out. I'll serve later. I'll go to the cross later. I'm working on some things. These, some of these people don't like me. Somebody just spit at me. I'm not, I, I can't go to the cross. I got to work it out. Anyway, so moving on. I have serving grace. Serve grace. You know, if you have, if you got questions with your life right now, you want to do big things for God, you got to start serving somewhere. He cannot steer a parked bus. And if he tries to steer, if you're trying to be steered as a parked bus, you're going to get misinformation. Glory to God. I'm trying to move on. Hallelujah. Let's, let's do it with scripture. Hallelujah. For, through grace, give it. For, okay. Hallelujah. I have grace. Everybody say I have grace to serve. 
So through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think himself more highly than he ought to think, but think soberly. According to God dealt every man the measure of faith. Interesting here, it's grace and faith. They work together. So in serving, um, you and I are never to think ourselves more highly than we ought. What I do, I do by the help of the Holy Ghost, by help of grace. I cannot do this on my own. I would not assume to do this on my own. Um, so, um, you know, the Bible says that when it comes to teachers and preachers that he didn't select many noble. <laughs> if you ever, if someone gets thinking a little uh, big for their britches, they should read the word. Because the reason God uh, chose you was not because of your infinite wisdom or who you are, your great this or your great that. It's because, um, you know, he thought he could make something out of you and uh, you were currently living in a dunghill and he lifted you up. Hallelujah. And glory to God for that. Hallelujah. Uh, for we have, so it's talking about, so everybody say, I have grace to serve and I have the measure of faith. So everyone has a measure of faith. Interesting, grace to serve, measure of faith. And then it goes on. And I really have never taught this like this, but I've taken verse 6 out a lot of times, and I teach this in one, a couple of my classes that I do in Bible Institute and um, in School of Ministry. Having, verse 6, and having then gifts differing according to the what? So everybody has grace. Everybody has grace to serve. You're, you're different. Aren't you glad we're not all the same? God likes diversity. Yes. Amen? Yes. He made you different. Yeah. Your grace is different. You're necessary. We're not copycats. Amen? We're to imitate people of faith, but we're not to copy them. You're unique. God wants to use you. Having then gifts different according to grace is given to us, whether prophecy, let it be, let us prophesy according to the proportion of our faith. So all the graces, <clears throat> salvation, watch this, salvation, serving, so saving grace, serving grace, standing grace, grace to be rich, all those are received in the proportion of of your faith. Because it goes on through. And so every gift that it lists, we call these the grace gifts. But every gift of grace, <clears throat> excuse me, is the way you receive it is in proportion to your faith. Let's look at salvation. Some people have received the grace of salvation to miss hell and make heaven. How many of you know that's good? But you and I have found out that salvation is all inclusive. And there are even different parts of salvation. There are some people that can walk in divine health. They receive grace by faith because they believe that, that divine health is offered to them. And so they receive that grace, that part of salvation, according to the proportion of their faith. Uh, everything God offers, what you enjoy, is in proportion to your faith. He has given you access by faith. The only way to receive the gifts, the graces, all that God offers is through faith. Everybody say, through faith. Woo, glory to God. He's given us access by faith. He, we, we prophesy, but all these are all grace. Because remember, he said, I received this by grace, and, and there's a measure of faith, and I'm going to prophesy, I'm going to minister, I'm going to give, I'm going to govern, I'm going to teach all by the proportion of my faith. I prophesy in proportion of my faith. I teach to you by proportion of my faith. It's according to what I believe. Um, it, I, I, I am blessed by the proportion of my faith. Different people walk. Just, this is how you'll know, understand this. Is Even in your own life, are there areas of God that it seems to be that it's easier for you to receive? 
Like, we'll just use this one. Some people find it easier to walk in healing, while others find it easier to walk in prosperity. Others find it easier to serve, while others find it more difficult. What is that? It is in proportion to the faith you have used to access the grace that's available to everybody. I'm going to say it again. It is the proportion of faith you're currently using to access the grace of salvation, serving, um, standing. Why do some people, when the devil comes, they just, they, just, they just put him on the run? And for other people, it's like this lifelong struggle with habits and problems. It is a lack of revelation of the grace that God has offered for them to stand. They're probably doing, even if they're two people quoting the same word, Two people saying in Jesus' name. It all looks the same, but, but one person has grabbed a hold of the grace to stand there by accessing it through faith. The proportion of your faith of what you understand that God is offering by grace is what you walk in. It is by grace through faith. Not of your own works. Not of your own uh, much Conf uh, I know people, I don't understand what you're saying. Because some people in our circles, they think if I confess it enough, that means I'll have it. But it's not working for them. Why is it not working? Because they're not doing it with grace. They're doing it by works. Now you owe me. It is, ne uh, I got to get to this. Okay. Are y'all good? Hallelujah. Um, um, uh, let's do this. Uh, Romans chapter three. We'll get a good start. Romans chapter three. I just want to give you a good introduction today, but Romans chapter 3, I'll start at verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall be no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law uh, is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being written by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all upon them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say to this time, the, the, this, his righteousness, that, it, that he might be just and the justifier of them that believe in Jesus. Where's the boasting then? Is it is excluded by what law? By, of works, nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that as a man justified by faith without the deeds of the law. What I want you to see, even justification, it's by grace through faith. By grace through faith. Everybody say, by grace through faith. Um, Ephesians, um, back to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Classic. It says... Um, um, for it is by grace, God's remarkable compassion and favor, drawing you to Christ, that you have been saved, actually delivered from judgment and given eternal life through faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves, though uh, not through your own effort, but it is the undeserved gracious gift of God, not as a result of your works or your attempts to keep the law so that no one will be able to boast or take credit in any way for his salvation. For it's a free uh, uh, for it's by free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation through your faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves, of your own doing. It came not through your own striving, but it is the gift of God. Not because of works, nor the fulfillment of law's demands, lest any man should boast. It is not the result of anyone, what anyone could possibly do, so that no one, no one can pride himself or take glory. Can you see that, and what I'm trying to get to, and get you started on this is I want you to start remembering all the grace, everything God has done. Take you back to your salvation. It is by grace that you are saved. God is the one that offered it. You did not set yourself up for it. You weren't doing something in a certain kind of way that God said, oh, I'm going to go save them, you. I'm a, uh, um, everything that God has done was about him. His goodness, His kindness. He's the one that decided to free, make sure that you didn't have to go to hell. He was the one who decided, you know what? 
I want their bodies to be well. I want them to live a long life on the earth. And by the way, um, I'm not going to wait till they get to heaven that they can uh, experience all the lavish goodness of God. I want to give them that now. Jesus, by grace, for, for the, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. For your, for your, he, he was rich, yet for your sake, he became poor. He became poor. That wasn't him just leaving heaven. That's the work on the cross. So the blessings of Abraham will come on you. All that is God's grace. All that's God's grace. Uh, some of you, you know, even like serving grace. Listen to me. If you'll take that spiritually, it'll get off on you. And um, I remember when I started getting a hold of this, uh, by grace, I was a good accountant. No, I'll just say it this way, I, I'm, and I'm not bragging on me, I'm going to brag on God. By grace, I was a great accountant. By grace, I was a great manager. By gra- when I tapped into what God was doing, that anointing doesn't go come, come on you when you pull on the lot and go, okay, now serving grace. That grace is on you for whatever you do as a businessman or a businesswoman, as a realtor, as a teacher, as a chef. I'm going to call him in. Uh, as uh, uh, what, that, uh, listen, I, I've been people eat some people food that weren't graced to, to do it. Hallelujah. I've been in some restaurants when they were not graced, but I've I've tasted and seen when someone does something unto the Lord, what can happen? We used to have a lady around here. She's went home to be with the Lord, but she cooked by faith. Ooh, and you can tell. Uh, everything's available by grace. Quit trying to do this on your own. Quit trying to defeat the devil on your own. Quit trying to live free from sin on your own. Quit trying to serve on your own. Quit trying to do your business, your career on your own. Quit trying to experience all that salvation is on your own. Listen to me. It has all been offered And God is not withholding any good thing. And his grace has offered it to you. And you can come to a throne room where grace abounds and you can find it. He's not hiding it from you. And yet, and yet, the only way you have access to it is by faith. I have access into this grace through faith. You were saved by grace, but it was through faith. God offers all these things, and yet it is so important that you apprehend them, that you get access to them, that you receive them to yourself by faith. And that's not of works of any sort, lest you should boast. It's not about becoming, I'm going to say this that might irritate some people, it's not about becoming a great faith man or woman. My house is bigger than your house. My car is better than your car. My diamonds are bigger than your diamonds. God wants to bless you with all that, but I'm not chasing that. It's chasing me. I've got my eyes focused on the giver of all grace. I love him. I don't deserve anything that he gave me. I was not in position when he found me to be lifted up from a dung hill. But when I, by faith, tapped into his grace, that power lifted me up out of a dung hill and set me down with princes. You and me seated at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. Everybody say, by grace, through faith. (laughs) You ready to walk in all the promises of God? Amen. Father God, I'm just so grateful.